What's up? We're back with a new video, and this time we are breaking down the episode one of Loki. Nick, this starts off right after where he Loki ends off in Avengers Endgame taking the Tesseract, um, and we see him land in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. But we don't know what time in Mongolia he lands in, right? No, I don't think it's I don't think it's specified, at least not that I can't remember. <laughs> And it almost feels like, I don't know, it's not, I'm not sure, but it feels, it gives a feel that it's not in present day. Yeah, I mean, I, I would imagine the way, like, the way they show, the TVA shows up immediately, like, I would, I would imagine, like, he's, like, gone, like, far, um, mm -hmm. just because, like, you know, that, that would warrant, it'd be different if he, like, was still, like, 2000, 2012, um, still when Avengers right. 1 was taking place. So I, I feel it feels like it, yeah. And I think it sets the tone right away with how the TVA goes. You know, they they don't mess around. They One stick and one hit from that stick and he's basically done for. You know, the technology they have is just so far superior to right. what exists from Marvel. And then we get this whole first half of the episode, which is kind of the Loki's introduction to the TVA and us as an audience. Yeah. And they're not, you don't mess around with them. We see the person who doesn't, refuses to get the ticket, just get incinerated on the spot. Right. Um, but what were your first impressions of the TVA? I liked that it was this very like step by step. We didn't really like, we really just stay with Loki and we watch him like this, this whole episode is titled glorious purpose, but it could have just easily been titled Tom Hiddleston gets bamboozled for like 51 minutes. Cause like, that's basically what like this entire episode, at least especially the first half is just Tom Hiddleston, like, and Loki going like, what the hell is going on here? And it's just a really like, um, how to like best, like, it's a very, like I've used this word a lot in our past reviews, but like just very like off kilter, like, it's done very seriously, but there is that element of like, this is like, like weird. And this is like, this is like, and like he's caught off guard too, you know, all the things he's seen in his lifetime and Loki's still caught off guard. Um, so it was, it was pretty interesting just have him slowly, just like have him and the audience just slowly walk through like what this organization is and what their role is. I think it gets really interesting as we move through the episode. And we get we get to the stack of papers, and I was like, in this future timeline, like they still do paper. They haven't. They, they have computers, right? Right. I I thought it was really interesting stuff like that, uh, little details, which I think are fun for the story more than anything. Um, we get to the court case. Essentially, Loki's hearing to see if he'll be executed or not. He's guilty for the crime, and he knows it, but he just says, "No, I'm not." Right. Um, but Mobius wants him, and we don't know exactly why until the very end of this episode, which we'll get into. Right. Um, and this is where I'd say we start to get into spoilers. Yeah. Um, if we didn't mention before, it'll be up in the title. But from now on, our like hardcore spoilers for the episode mm -hmm. in the series. Um, so for the rest of the episode, we get Mobius showing Loki around a little bit, right? He and Loki sees whatever the TVA city is. And it, I mean, it's breathtaking. I mean, the flying cars, just the yeah. structure of it. It looks like from the background that it's just made in the middle of space. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it, you know, as the camera pan pushes forward onto the broader TVA, you're just like, oh my God, this is, this is insane. Right. Um, and the imagery of those three as Loki calls them, lizard people. Yeah, the, um, the, the original timekeepers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to probably play in either in this series or in the broader MCU. Yeah, I mean, I think one of them is Kang the Conqueror, which, right. you know, known Jonathan Majors is. In fact, during that whole, like, animated intro sequence, the Miss Minutes thing, I was like, this may just be me, but that one one of those guys looks like Jonathan Majors. It may have just been me, but I was like, I think they're already like laying that groundwork, laying that groundwork there. Cause I was like, that very much resembles that man. But um, that might have just been my mind going on about it. Yeah, I'm 
no, I, I didn't see that, but I, I definitely believe you on there, and it would make sense. Mm. Um, as a dog barks in the background. <laughs> um, you know, like dogs, Loki is great at causing chaos. Really? Um, and they, they go through, Mobius sits down with Loki, and they go through his whole life mm-hmm. up to a certain point, right? They go up to his mother's death. Yeah. Um, and you see how profoundly it impacts Loki. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a really great character moment. And I think this episode really highlights some amazing character moments for the character, mm-hmm. for, for the character being Loki. Right. Um, and the way Mobius describes him, and Mobius is like, oh, so you see me as like a, sorry, Loki's like, you see me as like a villain or like a bad guy. And he's like, no, that's not. Like, you're the guy that created the Avengers who saved the universe. Yeah. Right? And, and I think that whole idea of like how the TVA views the timeline, I think that was a really interesting lore perspective uh, as far as the world. Yeah. And like, it really like, I, um, WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier all have very immediate setups of like, oh, like Wanda lost vision, uh, Steve Rogers is not around. They had that immediate after effect. But like here, they're caught in a really interesting perspective because it's like, this isn't the Loki, at least we were left with in Infinity War. This is like a still a, like a younger, like rawer Loki. And I thought, and I was always curious, like how would, how this would impact him. And I, and I do love the um the whole like uh that whole device though just showing him what was supposed to happen what has happened i thought that was really great just for one giving tom hiddleston like i guess material to like act off of because i think he did great and also just like from a story perspective it's really fascinating because it's like he's fighting to save his life which you know he's a he's been at this point in his life even like all the way up to like ragnarok he was like a pretty selfish person so he's just you know, trying to stay alive, but there's also this hint of, like, he sees a chance to be more than just, like, the villain. Like, that point you were saying about, like, um, oh, he's the guy who created the Avengers. I took that as kind of, like, a sad thing, or at least he's like, oh, like, you're just the stepping stone. And I was yeah. like, oh, that'd be, that that sucks. Like, imagine just being to, like, no, you're important for other people. You, not, not yourself, specifically, you're just important in regards to how you affect other people. And I was like, that's, that really sucks. Like, I can imagine, like, that kind of like would be a really crushing blow. And I'm, I'm really intrigued to see if how this is like, maybe like him as a redemption story, him really being like a trickster. Like, I think there's a, it really sets up a really great position for the character to go in all sorts of directions because it's, he's, he's trying to stay alive, but he also, there could be like a second, this is a second chance for him basically. Yeah. And I think where it gets really emotionally interesting is he's thinking about that Mobius gets called out. Loki, of course, is Loki and escapes. Mm-hmm. And he goes to find the Tesseract. And it doesn't work. Yeah. And what does he see in that drawer? Infinity stones. Four reality stones, multiple time stones, you know, so many so much stuff that he's like, oh my God, what what is going on? Right. These this is where he, you know, he's like, oh, it's an illusion. Like this is some sort of elaborate trick. Right. It's at this moment that he realizes that everything is like not as it seems. Mm-hmm. And and it completely switches his reality. Because you, you can just tell because Tom Hiddleston's such a great actor and his facial expressions like mm-hmm. these are powerless here. Yeah. And and it gives a full scale. And in that singular moment, you understand how powerful the TVA is it squanders any threat of Thanos in right. how large, how much power this organization I, has. I, I just love the reality. Yeah. I just love the line where they're like, Oh yeah. Some guys use them as paperweights. And I was like, really? <laughs> like these are the things that like wiped out all of life. And like, there's just some guy like fiddling around with it at his like desk job. I was like, that's such a crazy, like, like perspective shift um to happen like i think just like more so i think as a viewer than loki because loki this loki never saw it, the events of infinity war but like as a viewer you're like these things are the most powerful thing in the universe and some and they're just keeping them in drawers and they're like oh yeah that thing they're like yeah we get them every like to every other tuesday or whatever it's like that's like just great crazy to like just um imagine i think really also puts like 
how Mobius, uh, the judge, and like how they all like perceive just everything because they're just like, oh yeah, you know, that's nothing. That's 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 the typical thing. Even though like to the viewers, like they've they've seen all the timelines, but like we're only getting it piece by piece. So I think it was, it was a great like display of their perspective. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the allusions to the multiverse wars, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. Um, might lead into the multiverse of madness and Doctor Strange. I'd be yeah. curious to see. When they, yeah, um, when they mentioned that, I was like, I was like, yeah, no, you guys are definitely setting up. There's like, I was like, there's yeah, no the way. Raiders, very, 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 like, just apparent. Um, I can't remember his name. I, something Waldron um, is the writer yeah. of the show, and he's also the writer on Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So, wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Um, but after this, we essentially get Loki going back to that room. Mm -hmm. um, he messes with the guard by switch, getting the collar off of him and onto her. Um, and you, it's like one of those little moments that shows that you can't underestimate Loki. Yeah. Um, because if you do, he's going to crush you. Right. Um, but he realizes that he has no real escape um, or purpose now. He knows he can't go back to that timeline. And... So he sits down and he watches the rest of his life. And he sees himself become real brothers and real friends with Thor. Yeah. And at the very end, dying, protecting Thor, and then Thor warning over his body. Mm -hmm. um, and I love how they do it, how it's like shot on film. I love how in this really digital society, they have like real film. I think yeah. it's really fun. Um, what were your thoughts on Loki seeing the end of his life and how that completely flipped his perspective? I mean, like, again, it, it's such a great foundation. I think it, it sets up a very, like, unpredictable story because um, he has, again, just two different goals. And, like, um, I think it's interesting to see where this character is taking because it's like we know Scarlet Witch is going to be a big role, but, like, we really have no word on what's... We know, like, we know Scarlet Witch is going to be big, Captain America 4 is happening. We have no idea what's going to happen to Loki. Like, I'm assuming an announcement or something will be made later, but like, we have no idea where he, where he could go from here. So I think it's a real, like, potential is limitless to see. And it's a, um, I'm glad they kind of got it out of the way, like, early on. They're like, they, like, they got, they didn't withhold, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, you're going to die at the end. Like, they just, they gave, they presented it right away. They laid all their cards on the table, or I'm assuming most of their cards. Um, just help get things rolling. Yeah, and that leads to Mobius coming back in. They have this final conversation where essentially, you know, Mobius keeps on asking the question, what makes you tick? Mm -hmm. um, and Loki says, as I forget the second line again that we talked about before, um, I don't like to kill. And then Nick, do you want to fill in the blank? Yeah, it's remember? like, uh, he put it very poetically, but it was um, like, desperate need for control it's, it's it's part of the illusion of appearing to be something more something threatening um someone trying to be in control i think i think that was the general gist of his little speech there yeah yeah and i think it i think that really encapsulates a, the, the the character arc for loki alone in this episode i thought was really interesting mm -hmm. now how much of that arc he's portraying versus how much actually impacts him in this head right you know those are probably going to be two different things mm -hmm. so yeah maybe playing to his audience right i mean it's it's gonna i feel it's gonna be the classic like is it in his nature to change type thing versus like what will he like what will he do without the experiences of of like ragnarok especially with him and thor and whatnot and and odin like um he's truly like kind of like on his own so i think it's going to be pretty interesting to see how much is he like bsing how much is like the little feelings like nagging at inside of him i think it's going to be like a slow unraveling because like loki is a much more like not one to indulge with feelings as much as say like i don't know bucky barnes or something so i think it's gonna be an interesting next five episodes of like the unraveling of those feelings and whatnot yeah, so we get left off with this, and Mobius says, all right, you're good. We're, we can work with you. Yeah. And then we get the reveal. Who are they hunting? This dangerous variant? Mm -hmm. It's a different variant of Loki. Yeah. 
Um, and now it all makes sense. We had heard rumors about Loki being the villain of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know if they were true. They are. Yeah. Um, and it's really interesting. They show they cut to a scene of a hooded figure essentially killing four people from the TVA. Right. Um, and taking the reset charge. Mm-hmm. And I'm really curious to see what this Loki is up to, causing chaos. Um, and I think it's a really good setup. I think this was a fantastic first episode, the best of any of the Marvel TV yeah, shows yeah. so far, by far, I think. This, this setup is just so intriguing and the stakes are so high that I think right. it really balances I think, the two with character. Yeah, I think on the point of another Loki, I'm, that's another plot point I'm glad they did it withheld because like, when when uh yeah, early in the episode and like Mobius is like um I just want to get into the mind of the god of mischief I was like they're definitely hunting him and there's gonna be some big reveal so I'm glad they didn't like hide that either it's just good to just you know let's let's just get it out of the way I'm really hoping it's Richard E Grant because I know he's I know he's casted and I'm like I know he's a great actor you know Logan um Rise of Skywalker so I'm like I think that I um, I hope it it'd be him but you know you never know um but I think it's gonna be a cool like uh, mirror arc essentially kind of similar to like Wanda and Agatha, uh, Sam and uh, 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 US agent. I can't remember his real name, but um, I think it's gonna be a pretty interesting like mirror arc of like, oh, this is what he could end up being again, or you know, what he versus what he is now. Yeah. Um, do you remember the name of the guy who robs the plane? Uh, DB Cooper. DB Cooper. Yeah. I love that moment. And how Mobius is like, I can't believe it. This is one of my favorites. You were D.B. Cooper? Yeah. Like, I love that little fanboy moment. Mm-hmm. I think it's like, um, a part of me wishes they didn't spoil that in the trailer, but I also can understand, like, you know, him looking smooth, jumping out of a plane, like, why they would show it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was a fun, that was a fun moment. Um, just to see the little, like, bit of his life that we haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. Um the one thing I want to say also before we end off, I think out of all the Disney Plus shows I've seen, I think this and Mandalorian ties for my favorite just production design. Like, I like I think the setup of the TVA looks fantastic. I think yeah. The, I think like even down to like is a weird like orange like it's like orange all orange lights. Those sort of like twist like little twisted like sort of hallways. Like I think the production design on just the the TVA home base is fantastic. And I I, I really have to give a shout out to that because it, it's really like detailed and really just, it pops out. It really pops out. Yeah. And using all those muted colors kind of gives the idea that what's controlling all of life feels so like mm. lacking in, in life itself. Yeah. I think, I think that whole mirror is very intentional from the production and design and very effective and putting forward like what this whole TVA thing is. Right. With that, that wraps up this review of Loki episode one, glorious purpose. Let us know what you guys thought in the comment section down below. Who do you think will be playing villain Loki? Is it Tom Hiddleston? Is it Richard E. Grant? Is it someone else? Mm -hmm. Let us know down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, and subscribe to this video and we'll see you next time. Peace out.